What's up guys, Stark here. In today's character spotlight, we are taking a look at Tally Gula, who is going to be fake granddaughter's resident ghoul. And I'm going to throw his artwork on the screen right now. And he does have some really cool artwork, especially his 4th Ascension artwork. I really am fond of it. And he, like I said, he does look like a ghoul from Tokyo Ghoul. If anyone has seen that anime, you probably have. It's really good. It's really popular. If you haven't, go watch it. But we're not here to talk about that. We are here to talk about Caligula and his stats and everything about him. So he is a Berserker and he's a 2-star. So he will go up to level 65 and he will be effective against all classes except for Shielders. But he will take double damage from all classes except for Shielders and other Berserkers. And at level 65, his maximum stats will be 6,831 attack and 7,303 HP. And then you can go ahead and grail him out if you want, and he will end up with 11,899 attack and 12,540 HP. Uh, it's pretty low stats for Berserkers, if I had to say. His attack stats not really that high, his HP stats not really that high either. And, you know, he will, he will die pretty quickly. If you don't, um, if you're not careful with this character. So moving on here to his skills, his first skill is going to be called Sadistic Streak A, which will increase his attack for three turns, and then it will also decrease his defense for three turns. And it's a 10% increase at level one, and then it goes up to a 30% increase at level 10, and then his defense decrease is 10% across the board. So that kind of sucks. But you can kind of offset this with other characters that increase defense. There's a lot of characters that do this. So as long as the increase is 10% or more, it'll kind of offset his, you know, his defense decrease. And then it's not really a big deal. And then he does get a 30% attack increase, which is really good. And, you know, basically this guy is just going to do some big damage on his command cards. His normal phantasm... Not really, I mean, it's pretty good. We'll get to it later in the video, but it's it doesn't do damage. I don't think it does damage. Pretty sure it doesn't do damage. Uh, so moving on here to his second skill, it's gonna be called Imperial Privilege A, which has a 60% chance to increase his attack for three turns, 60% chance to increase his defense for three turns, and then it will also restore his HP. So again, this is a RNG-based skill, which I'm never a huge fan of, but you know, it's a 60% chance, so odds are you'll get one of the two buffs to go off, and it's a 20% increase at level 1, goes up to a 40% increase at level 10 for both of the effects. So, if you do get the defense increase, it will kind of offset his, you know, his first skill with the defense decrease, but it's a 60% chance, so, you know, you can't really count on that. But if you do pull it off with the attack increase, he's going to have some pretty good stats, do some pretty solid damage with his command cards. So his third and final skill here is going to be called Glory of the Past B, which will increase Buster Card effectiveness for one turn, but it will also decrease his HP. So he does have quite a few skills here that will also do negative effects to him, which kind of sucks, especially though that he loses his HP and then he loses defense. Like it's making it so that this character is going to be very, very easy to kill. Now you do only lose 500 HP when you use the, the third skill. So it's not really that much of a decrease, but, you know, anytime Berserkers lose HP, you gotta be careful, because they are very easy to kill, especially, like, lower level ones that don't get that much HP, especially if you're not grilling out the character, which you probably won't. The attack increase, though, or the Buster Card effectiveness increase, though, is really nice. It can go up to 50% at level 10, so combo that with his other skills, and then the uh, passive that I'm going to talk about here in a second potentially a craft essence that you can throw on this character and he's going to be hitting pretty hard so you know that's definitely where this guy's main use comes into play so his class skill is madness enhancement a plus which will increase buster card effectiveness by 11 percent so again this is going to make his basic attacks just deal that much more damage there's really not much else to say about that moving on here to his ascension materials you know, this is where things get a little bit tricky for this character because he needs quite a lot for his Ascension and his skill enhancement materials. Needing the Crystals for the second Ascension, Lanterns and Jewels for the third, and then Lanterns and Pages for the fourth. So honestly, in my opinion at least, it's really not worth it to go out of your way to level up this character. You just need way too much to max him out, and there's plenty of other characters you'd rather want to use these Ascension material items on as opposed to this guy. 
And the same thing can be said for his skill enhancing materials. You need the jewels, crystals, pages, as well as the horseshoes. And it's just so much. Like, I don't understand how they calculate what characters get what items. Like, it doesn't seem like it goes by rarity. It just seems like they're just putting whatever they want in and saying, yep, that works. We'll just go with that. But he does need a whole lot. And he does have pretty solid skills individually. So, you know, if you do end up maxing them, you can get some pretty solid stats out of it. But again, it's a lot for a two star berserker that doesn't have that much good stats or usability. I'm not too sure it's worth it. So, moving on here to his craft essence, it's going to unlock the There Is No Love Here craft essence. And while equipped, it will increase Buster Card effectiveness of all allies by 20% but decrease their defense by 10%. So again, he's got another skill here that will do some damage to him, and this one will further decrease his defense by 10%, which kind of sucks. You can offset it with his second skill again, but still, you really don't want to make it easier for this character to die. And he does only give a 20% increase for Buster Card effectiveness, so you can definitely substitute that for Limit Zero over if you have that. You get all the positives with none of the negatives. So moving on here to his command cards and his Noble Phantasm, he has one Quick, one Arts, and three Buster command cards. And this is really nice, it's a standard Berserker setup of course, but this guy, like I said, his primary use is for his actual command card attacks. So more often than not, if you're using him in a Buster team, you're going to get Buster Chains and do even more damage. So if you max out this character, you're probably going to do some really solid damage with his normal attacks if that's the strategy you decide to use for this character. His Noble Phantasm though is an art which is a little bit unusual for a Berserker of his like type and set and stuff like that, but his Noble Phantasm is really situational. Uh, it will have a high chance to inflict Skill Seal for 3 turns and then have a high chance to inflict Noble Phantasm Seal for 3 turns on the overcharge. So as you guys can see here, it doesn't do any damage. It does target all enemies, which is nice, but it's very situational. You only really need to use this for characters that rely on skills and buffs and noble phantasms. So I kind of can just call back to something on global like the Nero Fest, where Nero would always buff her attack and defense. So something like that would be really good for this character. You just go in, use the noble phantasm, stop them from buffing themselves up, and it would make the fight that much easier. So now we can move on here to some of the craft essences that you could potentially use on this character. Uh, first up, we're going to talk about Kaleidoscope. It's definitely not the one I would recommend using, but what you could do is, since he's easy to kill, you could potentially put him in the back line, and then make it so that when you get to the boss, one of your characters is going to die, he'll come out, use his Noble Phantasm, then he'll die, and then you can bring out like your actual third character, and then do, do some serious damage. Because once he uses Noble Phantasm, he pretty much use, uh, loses all of his usefulness. So you can definitely substitute that for a better character at the end. And Kaleidoscope really helps with that because he'll come in with his Noble Phantasm basically ready to go. And you can use like Waver or someone like that to give him the last 20%. And then use his Noble Phantasm and then he can get out of there and someone better can come in. But if you don't want to do that, you can go ahead and just give him a craft essence that can boost his already relatively high buster card effectiveness. So you could use the Verdant Sound of Destruction for the 15% increase, or you could use Limit Zero Over for the 25% increase. And just focus on doing as much damage as possible with this character before he ultimately and eventually dies. So that's pretty much going to wrap up this video here. I will leave you guys with his Noble Phantasm. And I will see you guys tomorrow.